Isaac isn't even a prophet, let alone the central figure of our religion. This is an extremely, extremely weak argument. However, let's entertain it real quick. And I'm going to make this very short and sweet. Trinitarians are known for forcing the doctrine onto the New Testament. Oh, we definitely don't force the Trinity on the New Testament. But since this isn't the main topic of your video, I'll just pop up a few verses that prove the Trinity in the New Testament. And even more atrociously, they're well known for forcing the Trinity onto the Old Testament as well. Again, we don't force the Trinity. Rather, we are forced to believe the Trinity. Because that's just what prophets like Daniel, Isaiah, and many others wrote in the scriptures. I don't want to go too much in detail about Jesus in the Old Testament because I'm working on a longer video. So I'll just pop up a couple verses. Now keep in mind guys, according to the Christian doctrine, when God does something in the Old Testament, this was either A, the Son directly did it himself, or B, the Son, aka Jesus, is in full agreement with this action as well. Context as well. Isaac married Rebecca when Rebecca was around the same age of Aisha. Huh? So a lot of scholars say she was three years old. Some say she was ten. High ball, absolute max. Rebecca was fourteen years old, but that would be an appeal to minority fallacy. No, Rebecca wasn't three or ten. Since you basically just pulled a trust me, bro, and gave zero sources, I'll sadly have to dismiss your claim via Hitchens Razor, and I'll just assert Rebecca's age was older than Aisha's at consummation too. We have some Jewish sources saying she was 14, and others say she was as old as 20. If we look at the chapter where we meet Rebecca, we see that how she acts and the role that she plays completely contradicts the idea that she is 3 or 10. She's able to communicate very well, carry buckets of water, and lift them up to a camel's mouth to give them water. Also, the calculation to get Rebecca's age to 3 years old uses extra biblical assumptions that aren't grounded in scripture. To get her age to 3 years old, you have to base the whole calculation off the assertion that she was born as soon as Sarah died, or around the same time. This Jewish text right here says Rebecca was born when Isaac was put on the altar. People that say Rebecca was three are asserting that Isaac was put on the altar by Abraham right before Sarah's death. And that just simply can't be proven. I'll use the same source this guy uses later on in the video, that Rebecca could have been born anywhere from when Isaac was four all the way to 37. And again, going off what scripture implies, it's pretty clear that she's not three or 10. I also forgot to say that this Jewish source puts Isaac's age when he was put on the altar at around 26, which would make Rebecca's age 14 if you calculate everything. And no, a lack of research on your part is not an appeal to minority. I've given multiple scholars and sources that hold the position that Rebecca is much older than Aisha. Let's all be honest here, she was around 10 years old. You cannot run from it. Let's steal man the fact that Isaac is a PDF file for a second. You know, since that's the best argument you followers of Muhammad have. I just find it funny that you guys disrespect your own prophet to prove a point. It's wild, but that doesn't take away from what Muhammad did. It doesn't make what Muhammad did any better or fine. That would be the two qua fallacy. By just saying, yeah, Muhammad's a PDF, but Isaac is too, doesn't take away or add much to your argument. It just shows you have nothing to prove that Muhammad was perfectly moral. And you have nothing to prove that Muhammad didn't marry a six-year-old. And you're desperately trying to grasp at anything in the Bible that may be wrong. With all that being said, if Aisha was around 10 years old, and Rebecca's around 10 years old, and you call Muhammad a pedophile, then it follows that Isaac was also a pedophile. So you must explain, why did Jesus Christ, the central figure in Christianity, bless a pedophile? Again, let's steal man Isaac being a PDF file since his whole video is founded on that. But that's giving him a lot of grace considering he didn't give any sources to any of his claims that his whole video is founded on. But you know, I represent Jesus, he gives grace, so I'ma give him some grace. He does realize Jesus blessing a PDF file doesn't mean Jesus is in accordance with or condones any form of PDF fileism. Jesus loves all sinners and he loves everyone, all his creation. And I already know what you're gonna say. Aha, so Jesus loves PDF files. Well, yeah, cause unlike your Allah, he loves all people. Unlike your Allah, he loves all sinners. So again, him blessing Isaac doesn't mean what Isaac did is good or fine. And it certainly doesn't make Jesus a PDF. I mean, if you go give money to a drug addict and he spends it on drugs, does that make you a drug addict? No. Jesus blessing someone doesn't mean he 100% condones their actions. When Jesus walked the earth, one of his favorite type of people to spend his time with was sinners. Not only this, you must explain to us why Abraham, peace be upon him, the center figure in all Abrahamic religions, did not condemn Isaac, who they were both alive at the same time, by the way. He didn't condemn Isaac for his actions either. Abraham didn't say anything because Rebecca wasn't three or 10. Rebecca was a woman and was considered to be a woman in those days standards. 
get a grip. You might say argument from silence, but this doesn't work in this case simply because according to you, logical fallacies don't apply since the presentism fallacy didn't apply. The point about the presentism fallacy not applying was in regards to the actions of Muhammad. You gave no reason on why any other logical fallacy wouldn't apply here and used me saying one particular fallacy wouldn't apply as reason to dismiss all of them. I'll just simply dismiss that weak argument since you didn't refute why the presentism fallacy should apply and you just gave weak reasoning on why no other fallacies would apply. But since you couldn't understand why the presentism fallacy doesn't apply, I'll explain it here since you couldn't grasp it the first time. Morality is objective and therefore what is objectively bad today, you know, like marrying a six-year-old in intercourse with a nine-year-old would be known 1400 years ago by the all-knowing Allah. And the moral example should know what is moral and what is not, since he's being told by an all-knowing God. So saying we Christians are using today's standards to judge Muhammad is simply wrong. We are judging him based on the objective morality set by Jesus. And I'm sorry, that guy just doesn't match up. The presentism fallacy also doesn't apply for Jesus, as he is supposed to be our example for all time. You know, like your false prophet. If Jesus did something immoral, which he never did, which is why you gotta grasp at straws to try to slander God, we wouldn't be able to blame the time period that he was in to justify his bad behavior, because he's supposed to be all-knowing in the perfect example. So it shouldn't matter what they thought was moral back then, because there's an objective morality. It doesn't matter what society thinks. Abraham is supposed to be a lawgiver. He's supposed to enforce the law. So why did he enforce the law in this case? Why did Abraham stay quiet on this? And why did Jesus Christ, your God, bless Isaac for this action? Again, Abraham didn't condemn Isaac due to the fact that Rebekah wasn't three or ten. And God blessed him due to the role that he played in the plan that God had for the Messiah. And like I said before, even if Isaac was a PDF file, God blessing him wouldn't affirm or justify his actions. And I know exactly what you're going to say. Because all you Christians say the same stuff. Prophets are not infallible. Look at Noah, he got drunk or whatever else you want to say. Well, this is a bad example because Noah, for example, getting drunk, drunk, drunk. <laughs> when he got drunk, we were supposed to learn a lesson from that. Whenever these prophets did immoralities, these immoralities were pointed out in the Bible and we were, you know, told to take these as lessons for ourselves. However, this immorality was not pointed out by God. It was not pointed out by Abraham or anyone by that matter. In fact, if you don't even look at historical sources, just by reading the Bible itself, you couldn't tell how old Rebecca is. Rebecca's age not being explicitly mentioned in the Bible and nobody mentioning anything about it unless you go to outside historical sources shows us that this was not some prophet committing an immoral act. Nothing you just said matters because this is the first time we agree the whole video. It wasn't an immoral act, but you think she was three or 10 and you still think it wasn't immoral. And I think it was fine because she was of age. Yo, keep the kids away. Because if he was, we would have taken it as a lesson and it would have been explicitly stated in the Bible and he would have been condemned for it at the very least. I mean, sorry, at the very least, it would have been mentioned somehow. But it isn't. It just gets glossed over. The reason for it is because it's very obvious that the Lord, your God, who is one, not three. Yeah, he isn't three gods. It's one God, three persons. Thinks that puberty equals adulthood. This is supported by this verse, and let's look what the major scholars say about this. Ezekiel 16 is very clearly talking about women that are gone through the later stages of puberty. It says long hair and full breasts. But yeah, I don't know why you think three-year-olds have full breasts, man. Like, someone check this guy's search history. You sick, man. Interpretation by Barnes. Gill's exposition. And here's what this Christian website has to say about it, which is pretty popular. The Got Question site and the other source you gave didn't make Muhammad's case any better. The ages of puberty isn't just a one-time thing. You don't just hit puberty and then all of a sudden you're of age. Both the sources you brought up make it very clear it's talking about a woman with a full head of hair and thy breasts are fashioned, swelled, and stood out. If Ezekiel 16 was talking about the very start of puberty when you first start it, you know as young as 11 or 12, it wouldn't make any sense to bring up full grown breasts. Cause not even 12 year olds have that, let alone 10 year olds, bro. What are you trying to say here? You think this is making me cringe. This is very clearly referring to the later stages of puberty and not the start of it, which usually is around 9, 10, 11, and 12. This absolutely buries your false prophet. As you yourself even mentions that puberty should be the age of consent. But the type of puberty mentioned in the Bible isn't the type of puberty you want it to be. You want it to be the early stages. That's weird. Too bad it's the later stages, bud. So you trying to justify marrying a six-year-old and pushing up on her when she was nine? 
isn't going to work using the Bible. But chapter 65 verse 4 in the Quran would make it a bit easier for you. The amount of mental gymnastics done to defend a PDF file is wild. Someone check this man's history.